always, always, on awakening in the morning, let us turn the day over to God. This is the day the Lord hath made. And I will listen, speak, Lord, be with me every step of today. And then frequently throughout the day, remember again, not my will be done, but thine. I will walk in the way that is shown me. How can God show us a way if we are not listening? If we are busy from waking up in the morning until sleeping at night, and then perhaps well fuddled with television before we go to sleep, believe that God's grace is with us through the night. We have shut God out completely. Oh, I enjoy television too, but that will never make me forget that the last function on retiring is opening consciousness to God's grace. Because be assured, we need it as much during sleep as we do during the day in order that we may awaken in the morning spiritually inspired, spiritually endowed, spiritually strengthened. The failure of mankind testifies to the fact that even eight or nine hours of human sleep is not enough to prepare us for a day of human activity. We require, in addition to human sleep or physical sleep, we require spiritual grace. Why not let that spiritual grace permeate our consciousness while we sleep? For God neither slumbers nor sleeps. The presence of God never slumbers, it never sleeps. And therefore, when we open our consciousness specifically to the realization of the presence of God and God's grace before sleeping, we can then be assured that while we sleep, God works. The Spirit of God works in us and through us, soul, mind, and body. On the other hand, this very activity of admitting God to our consciousness at night may prevent our sleeping as many hours as we have been accustomed to. Instead of trying to force ourselves to sleep, it is far better to remain awake, communing with that spirit that is within us, resting in quietness and in confidence. You see then that the entire secret of an harmonious life lies in our ability to open the door of consciousness and admit the Spirit of God so that the Spirit of God may be upon us, that we may be ordained. The secret of an harmonious life depends entirely on the degree in which we can admit this presence of God consciously so that thereafter we may live in the consciousness, I have meat. I have the presence of God within me, and it is the substance of all form. Let us walk for a few minutes with Moses on his trek with the Hebrews out of Egypt. And behold, as a cloud appeared by day and a pillar of fire by night and manna out of the sky and water out of the rock. And ask yourself if you sincerely believe there is anyone in the world that can work such miracles. If you truly think objectively, you will know 
that no one on the face of the globe can work such a miracle as producing a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night and manna falling from the sky and water from a rock. It cannot be done. And Moses never attempted it. Moses lived in the realization that I and my father are one. I am that I am. The presence of God is within me and speaks through me and acts through me. Moses was told that when he went to Egypt that that voice would be with him, that that power of God would be with him, that he did not need to take an army to free the Hebrews. He could go without an army and free them in spite of Pharaoh's armies. With what? Only one thing, I will be with you. I will speak the words through your lips. Now, all that Moses had to do was to live in that consciousness, the I am is with me, the I am doeth the works, he performeth that which he has given me to do, And then God, in God's mysterious ways, produces a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night and manna from the sky and water from the rocks. And then let us follow Elijah as he is being persecuted in the wilderness. He finds a poor widow sharing with him. Well, a poor widow hasn't very much to begin with. But here he finds one ready to share of that little with him. Sometimes even rich widows don't do that. And then he found ravens bringing him food. And he even found the miracle of cakes being baked on the stones before him. You don't believe that a man can do those things, do you? Please don't. No man can perform such miracles. But I can. I, who have meat the world knows not of, I, the Spirit of God in man, I, the presence of God in you, I can. And as long as you are about your father's business, doing that which is given you to do, you too can relax. And if it is necessary for a poor widow or widower to share with you, it will be done. If it is necessary for ravens to bring food or any other birds, it will be done. If it is necessary for food to appear out of the air, it will be done. Never credit any man with being a miracle worker. It is the spirit of God in man, that which is closer to every one of us than breathing. And then finally, let us walk with the master and watch him heal the sick and at the same time say, I can of my own self do nothing. Let us watch him as he feeds the hungry and hear him say, if I speak of myself, I bear witness to a lie. It is the Spirit, the Father within me, that doeth the works. Watch him raise the dead, in spite of saying, I of my own self can do nothing. And then you will know that no man is a miracle worker, not even Jesus Christ, but the Spirit of God with which he was ordained, the Father within him. And so you will discover that the reason he taught and the message he taught was that you and I have that same indwelling spirit in us, even as he proved to Paul, who at one time was Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor. Even through Saul of Tarsus, he made Paul a miracle worker by that same spirit which was also in Christ Jesus which is also in you. Therefore, 
Learn to commune with that spirit which is within you and discover for yourself that all that the Father hath is yours. You have within you the same substance, the same spirit, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. But you and I must develop that listening ear in order that that spirit may be released. Or as Browning said, we must open out a way for that imprisoned splendor to escape. That imprisoned splendor which I am, which is the Christ, the Spirit of God in you. As we do that this month, I'm sure you're going to discover by the end of the month that it is literally true that the miracle worker that worked through Moses and Elijah and Jesus and John and Paul, that miracle worker you have indwelling within you. Thank you. Thank you.